Shalom. Giving all praise to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachahakwarash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations, as always, to the elect, those who are coming back to the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh, in these latter days, through the sacrifice made by his only begotten Son, Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, through whom we receive the Holy Spirit. And with the Holy Spirit comes what? Putting off idols, repentance, all right, and turning back to the ways of our fathers to the best of our ability in this uh, spiritual Babylon, because that's exactly where we are, all right? And when you go into ancient Sumeria, okay, that is the origin, all right, of a lot of the pagan holy days that were practiced all right, by the um, the Assyrians, the Babylonians, okay, uh, the Persians, the Medes, okay, the uh, the Babylonians, the Neo Babylonian Empire, okay, um, as well as the Greeks and the Romans. They all borrow their traditions and gods. All right, from that ancient Sumerian empire. This is why America is known as Babylon the Great. All right, because remember, Nimrod started his uh, building and it was called Babel. Now, Babel means confusion. Now we're in Babylon the Great. Okay, well, that confusion, all right, is, is, is on a whole nother level. Double rebellion is what it's called in Jeremiah, the uh, 50th chapter, Marathiam. Okay. So all of those ancient customs and traditions that our forefathers have constantly failed to. All right. They're back here today. Repackaged. And Christmas is one of them. And as you can see here in this video, only heathens will justify paganizing what is holy. The video was uploaded by the beloved brother Karataza. GMS Vegas sit down, all right, space 777 is the title of his page, subscribe and be constantly edified. In this video, all right, as you see here, Vocab Malone, which that mustache looks terrible, okay, with some other uh, Edomite, what looks to be an Edomite, you know, which it's ironic that these people condemn us for celebrating things like the Passover we don't have to do that that was the Old Testament right we don't have to you know but here it is the Messiah celebrated the Passover I thought you all the, the goal was to be Christ-like okay the, the Messiah himself all right celebrated the Passover okay the, the feast of dedication he celebrated that he kept the Sabbaths okay so why do we get condemned for trying to do the same thing to the best of our ability while in this captivity? All right. Because at the time of the Messiah, they had their calendar, they had their holy days. All right. But the Messiah didn't bow to those days. All right. He kept the traditions of his fathers, which is how he was perfect in the law. The only way he was perfect in the law is if he was perfect Okay, and, and keeping the holy days, the Sabbaths, and everything else. He was without sin, meaning he didn't bow or do any of the, the crap that the Romans, okay, and the various different um, gods and idols that were around at his time. Okay, and here it is. We're trying to do the same thing, and we get ridiculed. But you're going to see here, with all of their ridiculing of us keeping the, the Passover, and, and mocking us for, for trying to keep the laws. Here it is. They're defending a biblical, all right, a, a non-biblical holy day in Christmas. Now, let's get this scripture real quick. Um, First Peter 4 and 3, for the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. When we walked in lasciviousness, lust, Excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries. 
when they think it's strange that ye run not with them in the same excess of riot speaking evil of you. And that's all Christmas is. Okay, it, it was a uh, called Saturnalia at the time of the Romans. Okay, it was banned in early America. Right, when you had the 13 colonies. Okay, it didn't become popular until German settlers came. All right, and we have a little bit of that history to show you. Why was it banned in early America? Because they were so-called Puritans, which it was nothing pure about them. But they had that, that mindset that, all right, uh, Christmas wasn't uh, tied to the ancient traditions of the Christians. So they outlawed it because what was it synonymous with? Idol worship, uh, uh, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings. Okay, you see it repackaged in this time under Santa Claus and his cute little reindeers. And then the Christmas tree, which we know has its roots in pagan uh, uh, adulteries and, and wickedness. Okay, and we're to stay away from that. But here it is. You have a Christian. Okay, let's listen to him. There and add new information as well, if you can, Michael. Right, so what they're basically trying to say is that it kind of sounds like they're decorating a Christmas tree. Someone cuts down a tree, dec decorates it with gold and silver. Uh, the problem with that is that they just sort of stop right there and they don't keep reading past it, where they basically point out, this is idle crafting. <laughs> I mean, it's not, it doesn't take a lot of research to just point that out. I have not found one scholar, one Hebraic scholar or ancient Near Eastern scholar who has ever suggested this is this is clearly decorating of a Christmas tree. So you have to get it solidified by a scholar and not by the prophets that this wicked custom is something that we should stay away from. So he's speaking of Jeremiah, the 10th chapter. Right. Which clearly describes a custom of the people of that time in Babylon that was vain where they cut out a tree out of the forest and what do they do they deck it with silver and gold and they fasten it with nails and hammers that it moves not okay you don't need to go to a scholar to know this same custom is being practiced today under a different name okay yes this is talking about the making of idols, which America, Babylon the Great, is known in the scriptures as the mother of all harlots and abominations. So these same practices that were being done then at the time of Jeremiah that he spoke out against would be done here. Let's keep listening to this guy. And as you see, the brother asked, so we need scholars to tell us or not this is a Christmas tree? Every scholar on Jeremiah 10 has noted this is about fashioning idols out of wood. It was a common tradition back then. As you can see, the brother put Ecclesiastes 1 and 9 says there is no new thing under the sun. Seems as the traditions continues. OK, and we have that here. Ecclesiastes 1 and 9, that which is the thing which had been is that which shall be. And there and that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. Ecclesiastes 3 and 15. That which hath been is now. And that which is to be hath already been. And God required that which is past. So the thing that has been is happening now. And that which is to be hath already been. So there has already been cultures on the planet Earth that practiced a paganistic custom where they cut out a tree and decked it with silver and gold. Right. Furthermore. OK. In the scriptures, you read about. Babylon, which that's where Jeremiah was at. 
Let's just type in Babylon real quick. Give me one second. So as the scripture speaks on a Babylon, a great, would not the same customs of Babylon be practiced over again in the latter days? Give me one second. So you see here, Babylon, that was Babylon. All right. You have Babel. OK. At the time of Nimrod. OK. You could just type that in real quick. All right, this is speaking of Nimrod, Genesis 10 and 10, in the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, which when you look that up, it means confusion. Okay? Then you have the Neo-Babylonian Empire, all right, which came directly and was synonymous with the Assyrian Empire. Okay, but the scriptures and prophecy speaks of Babylon the Great, Revelation, the 18th chapter, is speaking of a great city in future prophecy called Babylon. OK. <laughs> and it's going to be destroyed. So you have Babel. OK. At the time of Nimrod, which was an anti-Messiah system, a tower he tried to build. To offset the plans of, of the most high. Then you had the Neo-Babylonian Empire, all right, ran by the Assyrians, okay, Nebuchadnezzar, the Chaldeans, okay, and in, in, in future prophecy, you would have, okay, Babylon the Great. So would not it make sense that the same things that were spoken of of our forefathers would be happening in this Babylon the Great? Revelation 17 and 5, and upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of, of harlots and abominations of the earth. Okay? Showing you that these Christians do not have it. They're not spiritual. They, they should put the Bible down. Okay? So here it is. These same people who condemn us for keeping the Passover are uplifting some goddamn Christmas. Showing you that they're heathen. So to compare this to Christmas trees is just ludicrous. So to compare this to Christmas trees is just ludicrous. So to compare this. So that. So they're saying it's ludicrous for us to compare this modern practice of Christmas to the ancient occult worship that was going on. In Babylon, showing showing you these people. This is this is why you cannot build with us, as the uh, as our forefather Zerubbabel said at the time where you were trying to the heathen were trying to build with with us. No, because what will you do? You will bring your vain practices in BS and try to implement it and incorporate it with the scriptures, man. Okay. this uh pulled up here to give you a little history on uh Saturnale as well it's a pretty uh good video let's listen to this this is the winter solstice and so when the sun starts to come out the people now are looking at the sun as a life-giving force and so during that time a number of ceremonies were held in northern countries in um, the far north was the Feast of the Twelve Nights, which stretched from December 25th to January 6th. Also in ancient Greece, there was the Bacchanalia, which was held for their god Bacchus, the god of wine and sport and play. Now, when you get 2nd Maccabees, the sixth chapter, as we were being Hellenized, when you go to the uh, sixth verse, it says, Neither was it lawful for any man to keep Sabbath days or ancient fast or feast or to profess himself at all to be a Jew 
And in the day of the king's birth, every month they were brought by bitter constraint to eat of the sacrifices and went. And when the fast of Bacchus was kept, the Jews were compelled to go in procession to Bacchus carrying ivy. Moreover, there went out a decree to the neighbor cities of the heathen by suggestion of Ptolemy against the Jews that they should observe the same fashions and be partakers of their sacrifices. See that? So let's go back. And you can see, all right, many cultures have taken to this custom of celebrating the winter solstice, the worship of Saturn, the worship of the sun. Let's keep going. The Romans had the Saturnalia for their god Saturn their main sun god, Saturn. And so you find during these times that the people held ceremonies in the north, they would burn uh, bonfires. The light was important, the fire, because the fire represents the light, the life-giving force for those who worship nature. Also in the north, they recognized that there was one tree that even that despite the cold would still remain alive. The evergreen tree, mm. the fir tree. And so in some cases they would take this fir tree, believing that there was powers of life within the tree, and they would put it in their homes, set it there and put a light on the top of it, or burn them in the front, or they would make mistletoes and put them over their doorways, a type of what we would call tawiz or tamima. It is an amulet. And they would hang the amulet over their doors. Hang the amulets in their home. And that's Tammuz, which we showed you in the last video that I went into this. So that's why I say the customs of this people are vain. Isaiah 40. Isaiah 40 and 19, the workmen melted a graven image and the goldsmith spread it over with gold and cast it silver chains. All right, if you didn't have the money to get that, he that is so impoverished that he hath no oblation chooseth a tree that will not rot. That's the evergreen tree. Okay. The Greeks and the Romans got this from these ancient cultures. All you have to do is go into the history of the Greeks and the Romans. They got their gods from Egypt, Babylon, Assyria. It's the same damn gods. And repackaged it. So that a tree that will not rot, he seeketh unto him a cunning workman to prepare a graven image that shall not be moved. So yeah, these are graven images. Okay? So the Lord ain't with this garbage. Let's go back. hoping that this fir tree, that this so-called life-giving force would protect them from the danger of the winter. And so their ceremonies developed around this. And this went on for hundreds of years. We also find in the ancient uh, northern countries and the Druids of the north, they carried out special ceremonies surrounding the mistletoe and surrounding the fir tree and the beliefs, and, and they would meet within circular areas. And they had a secretive cult that spread throughout the far northern countries. One of the interesting individuals, and you can look this up if you can find it in the dictionaries or encyclopedias, is a man called Mithra, hmm. or Mithras. This is a very mysterious character. And when you look at history, you find that this uh, individual called Mithra was born on December 25th. His day of the week was the seventh day of the week that we still call Sunday. He was supposed to be the son of the, of the sun god himself and they had a special sacrament made up of bread and wine. And they would make this drink during this time and supposedly he died for the sins of the people. That is... 
where Christianity gets its Jesus from. That's the origin of it. It has nothing to do with the Bible. Okay, it is a pagan rite and custom meant to make up their own story of the Son of the Most High by using stars, trees, the sun itself, planets. It's not a custom of the Israelites, man. So it's not something we follow, man. And anybody with the Bible in their hand trying to justify this crap is wicked. Point blank, period. And you can watch the rest of this documentary. Some pretty good information. He starts to go a little left on certain points, but the history of um, this uh, so-called Holy Day is what I wanted to keep the focus on. And we know that they have their calendar on the left-hand side and the winter solstice, all right, is a part of it. That all comes from ancient rites, all right, and wicked occult practices. We have nothing to do with that. This is Leviticus, the 18th chapter, in the 24th verse. Defile not ye yourselves in any of these things, for in all these uh, the nations are defiled, which I cast out before you. Those same practices are being done here in the mother of all harlots. Okay? Child sacrifice. Offering a uh, 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 swine. Human sacrifice, the drinking of blood, orgies, lasciviousness, wickedness, which our people are heavy into all of these things, man. Okay, they may not outright sacrifice their child. Okay, but as your child is getting a, a present from under a Christmas tree, these things are offered unto other gods, which is why our people are off with no connection with their power. And Halloween, all right, you dress them up as demons. Christians agree with all of these things. Okay? And the land is defiled, therefore I do visit the iniquity, therefore, upon it. That's why Babylon the Great is going to be destroyed, because of these same practices the Canaanites were doing. And the land itself vomit out her inhabitants. You shall therefore keep my statutes and judgments and shall not commit any of these abominations, neither any of your own nation nor any stranger that sojourneth among you. Okay? For all these abominations have the men of the land done which were before you and the land is defiled. Look at this land. That the land spew not you out also when ye defile it as it spewed out the nations that were before you and as you go into history jake continued doing those same things all right that got those nations spewed out they took on to those customs and traditions until this very day which is why we're in captivity for whosoever shall commit any of these abominations even the souls that commit them shall be cut off from among their people therefore Shall ye keep my ordinance that ye commit not any of these abominable customs which were committed before you and that ye defile not yourselves therein. I am Yahweh, your God. Let's look up this word customs. All right. Ha ka. All right. Ha ka. Statue, ordinance, limit. Intactment, something prescribed, a statue. Okay? Now, as we read in Jeremiah, the customs of this people are vain. Right? So why would any Bible believer reading this try to look for a way to say, well, nah, the, the Jeremiah ain't talking about Christmas. You're, you're ludicrous to say that because you're a damn demon, man. Okay? Okay? Yeah, to all of these traditions. Okay, Jeremiah 2 and 5. Thus said the Lord, what iniquity have your fathers found in me that they are gone far from me and have walked after vanity and, and are become vain? And what is the vanity that our people are walking after? These holy days, the ways of this world, wickedness, vanity, 
pride, arrogance, filth. And these Edomites want to see you in that state. That's why they're saying, no, don't keep the commandments of the Lord. You can eat what you want to eat. You can do what you want to do. Which is going to keep you in that perpetual, all right, uh, 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 dumbed down state. Now, this is an article off theweek.com. How did the first settlers celebrate Christmas? They didn't. The pilgrims who came to America in 1620 were strict Puritans. They were wicked as hell. They did a whole hell of a lot of wickedness. There was nothing pure about their ass. All right, but for just, just for the sake of the argument, with firm views on religious holidays such as Christmas and Easter, Scripture did not name any holiday or holy day except the Sabbath, they argued. Now, when you go to Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, you do have holy days. <laughs> All right. They argued in the very concept of holy days implied that some days were not holy. They. For whom all days are holy can have no holiday, which is off according to the Holy Scriptures, as we read in. uh Sirach, the 33rd chapter, I believe, some days have the most high set apart to be hollowed. Days where people gather together and do things to bring them back to mem remembrance of a, of a great thing the Lord did in our past. Okay. And for us to honor our Lord. Okay. And, and, and uh, you know. Either mourn, okay, either either have a feast or whatever it was. Yes, we have holy days in the scriptures, man. Anyway, that was a common Puritan maximum. Puritans were particularly contentious of Christmas, nicknaming it Fullstide, and banning their flock from any celebration of it through the 17th and 18th centuries. OK, so you can look up that history. <laughs> it says, why didn't they like Christmas? They had several reasons, including the fact that it did not originate as an so-called Christian holiday. You cannot go into the scriptures anywhere and find a holy day where we're supposed to have a tree in our house. OK, and celebrate the birthday of the Messiah. That's nowhere in the scriptures. The upper classes in ancient Rome celebrated the 20, 25th of December as a day of the sun god Mithra, which became popularized in Rome. Okay? The date fell right in the middle of Saturnalia, okay? A month-long holiday dedicated to food, drink, and revelry. Okay? Let's, let's look up the word revelry. See what that is. Give me one second. Revelry, all right, and Pope Julius the first said is said to have chosen that day to celebrate the birth of Christ as a way of co opting the pagan rituals. Beyond that, the Puritans considered this considered it historically inaccurate to place the Messiah's arrival on December twenty fifth. They thought the Messiah had been born sometime in September. Which he was born in the spring, man. Revelry is lively, noisy festivals, especially when these involve drink and large amount of, of, of alcohol. All right? Merry making festivals. And when you go into it, orgies and all matter of wickedness was being done on this day. Okay? Let's go here. It's the same pretty much the same thing okay christmas in the colonies from 1659 to 1681 showcases one's holiday spirit in boston could cost you as much as five shillings <laughs> so you would have you got fined in ancient in early americas if you celebrated some goddamn 
Christmas. That's right, Christmas used to be illegal. It's somewhat surprising then that the same, all right, puritanical minds also created the first American batch of eggnog, all right, in 1607. Christmas was so in, in, con, in consequential in early America after the Revolutionary Wars, Congress didn't even bother taking the day off to celebrate the holiday, deciding instead to hold its first session on Christmas in 1789. It took almost a century for Congress to proclaim it a federal holiday. Okay? Now, when you go back to Saturnalia, it says Saturnalia in ancient Rome, all right? And this is why it was banned in early America. The devil himself said it was too much, right? Because they were supposed to be the Puritans, right? <laughs> After rape, robbing, and murder, every goddamn thing. Saturnalia is a festival celebrated with the ancient Romans who marked, all right, to mark the so-called rebirth of this year marking the winter solace of the uh, Julian calendar, which was a, just a time where everything's dead. So what's being rebirthed? It's the sun worship, man, which existed in the Roman Empire in Europe for centuries. However, the party began eight days earlier on December 17th when the general rules governing the community were reversed. Men dressed as women and masters dressed as servants. Okay, and that's all to the God of Saturn. The Canaanites did that. Okay, that's why when you read the law, it tells us that a man should not dress in a woman's garment and a woman shouldn't put on a man's armor because that's how they honor their God. Now, here it is. You see the Romans adopted that practice. Right? <laughs> Come on, man. It says, but the similarities with Christmas we know today began. Houses were decorated with greenery, candles were lit, and gifts were exchanged. The celebration was held in memory of the sun god Saturn, or the, the god Saturn, hence the name Saturnalia, and has always been characterized by a relaxed, social order and festive atmosphere okay and that's what they try to push but it was revelry man these edomites were never chilled and relaxed johnson emphasizes the celebration of saturn in early winter has a meaning saturn is a principal deity of the romans he's the god of weather agriculture supernatural as a part of the tradition of pleasing the deity and other uh, others, gifts were introduced. So there's no biblical custom where we have to do stuff like this. See, when you get into the scriptures, as a matter of fact, as we read in the video I did on Christmas uh, Saturday, okay, we went into this very scripture in Wisdom of Solomon, the 12th chapter. Okay. Thirteenth chapter. Wisdom of Solomon thirteen and one. Surely vain are all men by nature who are ignorant of God and cannot of the good things that are seen know him that is, neither by considering the works did they acknowledge the work master but deemed either fire, okay, or wind, or the swift air, or the circle of the stars, or the violent water, or the lights of heaven to be the gods which govern the world. And that all goes back to Samaria, okay, Sumer, Babylon, okay, <laughs> and, 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 and uh, Abraham's father, was into this garbage, which is why Abram Abram had to be awakened to his true, all right, uh, 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 culture, 
and he's separated from his fathers. They were doing that. They were into all of this, these idols, making idols of the creation and not worshiping the creator. That's why it says uh, to Abraham was not Yahweh well known. All right. Abraham didn't have. You know, he didn't he wasn't raised with the full understanding of his connection to that God and his people. But he was brought back to that understanding just as we were. OK. So they they take these things to be the gods which govern the world. This is the practice in, in custom of the heathen, which. What they're doing what this what these devils are doing here. Is they're pushing true profanity. As a matter of fact. Leviticus 22 and 31. Therefore, shall ye keep my commandments and do them. I am Yahweh. Neither shall ye profane my holy name. Now, they'll say they use so-called curse words. He said S-H-I-T. That's profanity. What is true profanity? Let's look it up. The word for profane. It just means outside of the temple, outside of what is hallowed. Outside of what is holy, halal, profane, to defile, to pollute, that's what they're doing. Ritually, they're telling you it's okay to celebrate these pagan, wicked holy days that have nothing to do with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They're saying it's okay to profane and not keep the, uh, the, the holy days of the Most High, which keeping the holy days does not guarantee you salvation. OK, but remember, the scriptures say this is my memorial unto all generations. There are particular things that you can do to show your faith, to remember the Lord. So we celebrate the Passover as our Lord did. OK, we keep the Sabbaths to the best of our ability. because You can't fully keep the, the law in Babylon the Great. So you do what you can to show your faith. But here it is, they're mock, they, they mock the Passover and keep shit like Easter and Christmas and Halloween. So they're, they want you to pollute and dishonor the covenant. They want you to pollute and dishonor Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai, man. Okay? To be sick. <laughs> it's a sick practice. And what in the hell is a grown ass man doing with a tree telling his kids to get the gifts from under from under it? Now, in this video, you know, a brother left a comment. And like the brother was going in, into in this video, you know, this is you can't build with us, man. Get out of here. Put the Bible down and just go be the pagan. You want to be. Because look at this mustache. That's a pagan uh, uh, mustache, man. It's horrible. You shave off all of the hair on your face and you keep that one line. This is the brother Rakhaya Kwam from London. GMS, Fear the Most High, 7 Ba, subscribe. The obelix, which is now seen on many Christian uh, churches, can be considered to be Christian in nature was anything but Christian at their historical roots. In the Old Testament times, the obelix was shown to be the center of Egyptian sun worship, such as mentioned in the images of Beth Shemesh. Okay, because that 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 those ob that obelix represents a penis, man. Okay. As a matter of fact, if you don't know what an obelix is, Egyptian obelix. Why is America so infested with these obelix? Washington D.C. Why is the the Roman cap? Why is the Vatican infested with all of these Egyptian obelixes? Because all of those practices were meshed together to create Christianity. 
which has nothing to do with the Bible. Okay? It's madness. So it says, the Christmas tree is an example of a pagan phallic symbol which once represented fertility worship, but now brought into the Christian home for reasons the people themselves don't understand. They simply believe that they are continuing to carry on a cultural and religious tradition. In Mystery Babylon religion, the true meaning of the obelisk is shown to be associated with sun worship. The ancients rejected the knowledge of the creator of the heaven and earth and placed their confidence in the sun because they believed the sun gave life to plants and all humanity. Along with this, they reasoned life was produced through sexual union. So the upright erect phallus became a symbol of life. Right? <laughs> so... When America says in God we trust, what God are they talking about? Why is this obelisk all over America? Let's go to the Vatican City. You see these same obelisks. Look it up yourself. See that oblix? What the hell does this have to do with our, our, our worship of the Most High in the Bible? So America is Babylon the Great and all of those customs. That's why when you read, uh, uh, what's that, uh, Revelation 11 and 8, it says, that that great city would be a spiritual Sodom in Egypt because those same Egyptian customs, including our captivity, are back here today. The mother of all harlots. So it makes sense that a pagan tradition would be pushed down your throat. As wicked as this place is, you think they're going to commercialize the, the true worship of the Messiah in the form of Christmas? Hell no. All right. Wisdom of Solomon 13 and 3, with whose beauty, if they being delighted, took them to be gods, let them know how much better the Lord of them is, for the first author of beauty created them. But if they were astonished at their power, what power? The, par the power of the lights of the heaven, the sun, the different planets, the, 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 the water, sex. OK, if you're astonished at their power and virtue, let them understand by them how much mightier is he that made them. <laughs> so. These these heathen have always. Taken things of. The heaven or of the earth and made idols of them. So and that's all Christmas is. <laughs> Right? I think the brother put it here. It says, because of their pagan roots, American settlers were not quick to jump on Christmas, the Christmas tree trend. German settlers were the first to introduce the indoor evergreen to the new country, but it did not go over smoothly according to the History Channel. But all is the sun god, who is the pagan god of fertility. His birth is celebrated in the winter solstice. The evergreen tree represents him. It is an idol. Okay? And what did the scripture say about the, the, the remnant elect? So these Christians are full of it, man. Revelation or Romans 11 and 4. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved unto myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. So let's listen to this garbage again so we can get a laugh. 
Can you? There and add new information as well, if you can, Michael. Right. So what they're basically trying to say is that it kind of sounds like they're decorating a Christmas tree. Someone cuts down a tree, decorates it with gold and silver. Uh, the problem with that is that they just sort of stop right there and they don't keep reading past it, where they basically point out this is idle crafting. I mean, it's not. It doesn't. And here it is, a Christian who 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 tells us we don't have to read anything out of the Old Testament. The Old Testament's done away with. Now they're telling us we 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 don't uh, understand it fully. Take a lot of research to point that out. I have not found one scholar, one Hebraic scholar or ancient Near Eastern scholar who has ever suggested this is this is clearly decorating of a Christmas tree. Right. So, so the scholars got to tell us. Every scholar on Jeremiah 10 has noted this is about fashioning idols out of wood. It was a common tradition back then. And there's no new thing under the sun. <laughs> so to compare this to Christmas trees is just ludicrous. So to compare this to Christmas trees is just ludicrous. So to compare this... So to compare this modern day holiday that is forced down your throat to something that was done back in ancient Babylon is ludicrous when the scripture said that Babylon the Great would be the major power in the latter days. This is why these Christians need to put the Bible down, man. And I mean, I had some more information, you know. Yeah. It wasn't until the 19th century that the Americans began to embrace Christmas. Americans reinvented Christmas and changed it from a, a raucous carnival holiday into a family-centered day of peace and nostalgia. Okay? Same with Thanksgiving. Okay? Halloween is supposed to be cute, but really the origins of it is death, the worship of the dead. And things that the Bible say don't do. But what about the 1800s peaked Americans' interest in the holiday? And it goes into that, you know, uh, history. You know, but the bottom line is the overview in the 1600s the Puritans made it illegal to mention St. Nicholas's name people were not allowed to exchange gifts or light a candle or sing Christmas carols Dutch immigrants brought in brought with them the legend of Sinister, Sinister Claus Santa first appeared in the media as St. A. Claus in 1804 the New York Historical Society was founded with St. Nicholas as its patron saint, its members engaged in the Dutch practice of gift giving as Christmas and so forth. But where in the scriptures are we told to do anything like that? See? Acts 17 and 30. At the times of this ignorance, God winked at, but now I've commanded all men everywhere to repent. Romans 8 and 12. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you live through the spirit, all right, do mortify the deeds of the body and you shall live. All right. As the scriptures say, touch not, taste not, handle not. All right, flee Babylon in the sense that you flee sin. Deuteronomy 12 and 30. Take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by following them, these gods, after that they be destroyed from before thee. And thou inquire not after their gods, saying, How did these nations serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise. See that? So... And even our people in Rome, they, they were doing the same thing as you read Romans, the first chapter, man. 
Ephesians 2 and 2, where in times past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, okay, the, the, the God of this world, Satan, Esau, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. And you still have our people walking in these wicked ways, man. among whom we have all had our conversation in times past in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Okay? So to hell with some goddamn Christmas, man. And this is the, 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 the exact reason we don't trust nor follow you Edomites, because you have done nothing but lead us into error. And that goddamn mustache is horrible, man, so...